Hey everyone, it is Sarah and I am back again here in Staten Island for a part two of places you cannot miss in this amazing borough. In this video, I'll share eight more places you can't miss in Staten Island. However, there's still a lot to cover here. So if you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Staten Island is known as the Forgotten Borough. And in this guide, I'm gonna share why you most definitely cannot forget it. Here you'll find places unlike anywhere else in the city, such as a boat graveyard with World War II ships, a seaside cottage once home to an LGBTQ icon, and the most delicious chicken and waffles breakfast you can find here in New York. So let's begin our journey into eight more places in Staten Island that deserve much more attention than they get. Did you know that there's an accidental marine museum in Staten Island? The boat graveyard is the final resting place of about 100 boats and ships throughout history. Vessels of historic interest include a World War II submarine chaser, the first World War II U.S. Navy ship to have a predominantly African-American crew, and the New York City fireboat Abraham S. Hewitt, which served as a floating command post at the 1904 sinking of the passenger ferry P.S. General Slocum, a disaster that killed more than 1,000 people. This site is not open to the public, it is hard to reach, and it is posted with no trespassing signs. So that doesn't mean you should go there just because I'm featuring it in this video. <laughs> Nevertheless, there are some visitors. Marine historians tend to explore the area via boats or kayaks, while the decaying ships are a popular subject for photographers and artists. Would you venture into the unknown and visit this eerie spot? Let me know in the comments below. I'm here at Jay's on the Bay. This was another local suggestion and this spot has been a diner since the 1920s. Today it's called Jay's on the Bay. It wasn't always called Jay's on the Bay. Jay's stand for Joe's, but Jay's on the Bay rhymes more. It's more fun that way. And they're really known for breakfast, brunch, but you can have lunch and dinner here too. Now the entire interior of this feels like a 50s diner, but I do want to note that what you're seeing here, it's not gonna look like this much longer because when the owner purchased this location during Hurricane Sandy, he just kind of kept the old school mentality vibe of it, but he's gonna be doing a full renovation. So when you come here, it might look a little bit different. The owner does come from a high-end background, so this isn't just your regular diner food, it's elevated diner food. And what they recommend you order here is their chicken and waffles, their Parmesan fries, and milkshakes. So this is their banana milkshake, and this isn't just like your typical milkshake you would get at a diner. This banana was flambéed. That's right, it means it was lit on fire. So they're not messing around here at Jay's on the Bay. Let's try it. Bro, oh my God. If I didn't just have a whole sundae at Eggers, I would drink an entire thing of this. So this tastes like vanilla and nutmeg and oh it's so sweet and delicious. Definitely get the milkshake when you come here. Wow look what I have. The food has arrived. I got the chicken and waffles. I got the parmesan fries. Let's start with the parmesan fries here. These are covered in parmesan and we have chipotle sauce because obviously this isn't your basic fries. I'm not gonna have ketchup with this. Whoa, this is delicious. It's really smoky because of the chipotle sauce. It's also really nice and creamy. The cut of the fries is really well done. It's like crunchy but soft on the inside. Mmm, that is gourmet fries. You shouldn't have fries with ketchup. You should have fries with spicy chipotle mayo. Way better. Now let's get into this one, which is like their best seller. This is their chicken and waffles. The chicken looks super juicy. It's also covered with a cheese. And then you have a nice fluffy waffle on the bottom there. It has the same chipotle mayo that I just dipped the fries in, but I also covered this with maple syrup. So, you know, you're getting a little sweet savory combo. Whoa, this place is so amazing. Holy <laughs> <sh> <laughs> That's the best thing I've ever eaten. 
sweet, savory combo is so good. And the chicken is like nice and crispy, but yet juicy on the inside. The waffle's super fluffy. The flavors are like so well balanced between the sweet and the savory. This sh is crazy. I'm sorry for swearing, but it is so good. Do not miss this place. And it looks like it also comes with some bacon in case you didn't get enough of the deliciousness from all the other things going on. I love it. I'm in love. So I'm on my way to go to the Alice Austin House, which is a national historic location. It's also a LGBTQ location. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about her life momentarily, but I wanna show you um, how to get there because you can park along the street, but I recommend walking along this beautiful beach. It's called the Matthew Wono Beach. Come this way. So you just gotta like be a little careful. Look at this, this is so gorgeous. It's literally a rocky shoreline. You can see lower Manhattan, New Jersey and Brooklyn right over here. Stunning, stunning views. And of course the Verrazano Bridge behind me. This is how Staten Island used to look back in the day, you know, before the, the ferry was here, before all of the boats were here. I mean, this is literally the natural landscape of Staten Island. And the Alice Austin house shows what that looked like back in the 1700s. So here I am at the Alice Austin house. This has been a national historic landmark since 1993. Now you may be wondering, who is Alice Austin? Well, she was a prolific photographer and one of the first female photographers documented really and she had significant contributions to the photographic history documenting New York's immigrant population, Victorian women's social activities, and the natural and architectural world of her travels. Austin was truly a trendsetter. She did things that Victorian women wouldn't have even dreamed of. Today it's like not that crazy, but she would like ride bicycles and like do art and try to have a career. Those things that were crazy in the 1800s. But anyway, she grew up right here in this beautiful house. Today it's a museum. You can also see what the house used to look like. This house, uh, parts of it was from 1690 and actually Back in those times, in the 1700s to 1600s, this entire shoreline was dotted with these beautiful cottages. And so if you can imagine that, but if you think this is charming, let's spin the camera around right here. So we have a beautiful view of the New York City skyline on this side. We have the Verrazano over here. And Alice Austin took over 8,000 photographs during her lifetime, many of which were here. And because she had such a great view of the New York City Harbor, she actually captured its rapid development in the late 1800s to the early 1900s. She lived here with her partner Gertrude for about 10 years. They were together for 53 years. So if you wanna visit the museum and the house and actually go inside, just check their website because their hours can change. But actually a really cool thing is they do uh, virtual tours online. So if you're watching this during COVID, which most likely you are, although hopefully it won't last much longer, right? Uh, you could actually go to their website right now and uh, tour the museum like you're here in real life and we can all just pretend that you are here in real life and you're having a grand old time and you're enjoying the view right here it's gonna be great you guys so yeah check it out a uh, very special place here in Staten Island I'm here at a neighborhood staple in Staten Island. It is Eggers Homemade Ice Cream. This place started in 1932 by Richie Egger. Today it is still family owned by Danielle Rally. Uh, this whole place has been family owned since 1932. Now it has switched different owners hands, but the ice cream quality is exceptional. They actually have a location in historic Richmond Town, which we featured in the first Staten Island video, so if you haven't seen that, check it out. But they're known for obviously their ice cream, their shake, and their other delicious desserts, so I'm very excited to go in there and try some. So the whole style of this place is like a 50s diner. They also have candy, like every candy you could ever imagine. Look at this. I mean, there must be like over 100 different types of candies. 
candy canes, like old fashioned candy. There's just so much candy. <laughs> we did one scoop and it's humongous. So unless you're like sharing this with a bunch of people, just do one scoop because Louie and I are gonna share this one piece. It's gonna be huge. We ordered the cookie sundae. The sundae is what is recommended. So heat up the cookie, put some ice cream on there. We got caramel, whipped cream, a cherry. It's gonna be amazing. This is the small sundae. Again, size of my head here, so just be realistic with what you order. Shoot, look at that, so gooey. Mm. Oh my God, so good. All homemade at Eggers. Wow, I'm having this before lunch and I regret nothing. <laughs> Definitely get this when you come here. Who's ready to get wasted? Woo! I'm just kidding, I can't drink right now. But as soon as this baby comes out, you know where I'll be. I'll be here at Flagship Brewing Co. here at Staten Island, the most popular brewing place recommended by locals. This spot was uh, actually opened in 2014, established in 2013, and uh, it was opened by Jay and Matt. They're locals here in Staten Island, and they noticed that there wasn't a lot of breweries here in Staten Island, so they wanted to open one for the community. They were neighbors, childhood friends, and so they decided to start this brewery here from scratch. You can go inside and look at all their beer equipment and see the beer being made. They have a lot going on here, especially like when COVID's not happening. They do live music, they have comedy shows, they do festivals. They also just started um, this program called Curtain Up. And this is a new beer that donates a percentage to the arts, um, specifically to performers, uh, Broadway, Broadway singers, performers, anyone in the arts that's struggling because of COVID. Although I cannot try this delicious beer right now, I'm gonna have Louie try it for you and tell you about it because number one, I can't drink it because I'm pregnant. Number two, he is a home brewer and so he is like a beer pro and knows exactly what he's talking about. So Louie, take it away. I'm gonna try two of their flagship beers, no pun intended. So we got here Swamp Tings, which is like a hazy IPA style, like a New England IPA. And then we have another one here, which is the Blood Orange uh, IPA. I mean, they both look delicious. We're gonna try this one first. Oh, it's a West Coast style IPA, right? So it's gonna be a little bit more malty, a little bit more bitter. It has this like in the background, like a blood orange sort of a bitterness to it and a flavor, which I really like. And this is one of their best sellers and I can, I can see why it's really refreshing. Has kind of like a little bit of bitterness, but a little bit of malty sweetness. So here is their other one, which is called Swamp Tings, which is like a hazy IPA style beer. And this looks so delicious and refreshing. Let's see what it smells like. Cause normally a beer like this, the aroma is really what's gonna capture most of the characteristics of the beer. That one's solid too. I kinda, I think I prefer the blood orange one cause it has like a really distinct flavor. Cause it's a little lower in alcohol. That means you can drink a little bit more of it, but not too much, relax. Voila, thank you so much, Louie. That was so great, thank you. So now you guys know what to order here. All their beers are great. Those are the ones that the owner recommended who just showed us around. When you come here to Staten Island or maybe you're a local, make sure you check them out. Now, um, if they're not open because of COVID, you can always get beer delivered. They deliver it to Staten Island, Brooklyn, and Manhattan. No matter where you are, you can enjoy some delicious beer from the comfort of your own home. Check them out, you guys. I'm here at Empire Outlets. This is the only outlet shopping center in New York City. Yes, that's right. Believe it or not, it is here on Staten Island. It is 350,000 square feet of shopping, restaurants, and experiences. They also do live performances here various times a year, like music and cool stuff like that. This is a spot you come if you want to get some good deals on um, higher end brands. So we're gonna go and check out some of the things. I already see they have Nordstrom Rack, which is one of my favorites, so I definitely want to go in there. Really uh, great views of New York City as well. I'll show you that momentarily. It's pretty incredible. Look at this. This is the view you have from Empire Outlets. It's a trillion dollar view of New York. So stunning. So yeah, they have restaurants with this view too. So it's like, 
you know? You could have a nice meal, or not even, it doesn't even have to be nice nice. I mean, they have like Shake Shack, and it's not like super fancy, but it's it's just Shake Shack's delicious. And then you could just see this view, and then get some great deals. Let's go do it. Okay, I'm in Nordstrom Rack. This is my favorite store, probably out of all the stores here. And look at these adorable little fashionable baby outfits. This is for three months. Oh, this, look at this, with the little pants. Oh my God, and then, oh, I'm obsessed. I shouldn't buy any more clothes though, because she has too many clothes already, but this is a nice hat. Yes, I like it. <laughs> Staten Island is known as the borough of parks, so I'm here at Clove Lake Park, and uh, Silver Lake Park is right next door. So there are two awesome parks right next to each other. This one, Clove Lake, has a lovely lake, obviously, because it's a lake. <laughs> um, but this actually used to be where Staten Island got um, some of its water supply before the 1900s. Another cool thing about this spot, they got a few things going on here. They have an ice skating rink, which you need to make reservations in advance for right now. They also have the oldest living thing in Staten Island. It's a tulip tree that is 107 feet tall and 300 years old here. This is actually what the Native Americans used to make their canoes out of. And speaking of canoes, you can actually rent boats on this lake. They also have the Stone House, which is a restaurant uh, right on the lake. Overall, it's just a really great way to get in touch with nature here in Staten Island. And we're just gonna continue exploring this area. Now, if you like birding, this is a wonderful spot to go for seeing owls in the winter. They have a few different types of owls here. Most notably, the Eastern Screech Owl, the Great Horned Owls, and the Saw Wet Owls. Now let's continue exploring this park. I want you all to just use your imaginations. I'm in Beso. That is the name of this restaurant. Now we're gonna put B-roll over of the restaurant because it's January and there's no indoor dining and I'm just going to take you there. So this is a Spanish restaurant owned by Julian Gascholi. They feature food from Spain and they have an extensive Spanish wine list, amazing tapas, and a wonderful atmosphere that literally makes it feel like you're in Spain, all right? They have beautiful pictures all over the walls of Spanish dancers and like gorgeous lights and that's where we are totally. I'm totally imagining it and I hope you are too. We ordered some food and I'm definitely not in my apartment. They have these really cute little igloos outside where you can dine right now. This is pulpo with patatas bravas. Uh, which is like essentially fried potatoes in cubes. Another tapas dish, this is gambas rolled in platano. So gambas are shrimp. These are very large shrimp, platano is plantains, and it's fried. <laughs> and then it comes with bread and olives. Pulpo is always one of my favorite dishes. It's very hard to make properly. So what you're looking for here is a really nice texture. You, want, you don't want it to be rubbery. If it's rubbery, that means it's overcooked. Not a good thing. I see they have a really nice char on this. I just dipped this in the spicy aioli sauce that comes with it, so let's give it a shot. Mmm, so that has a amazing charred flavor and it tastes really fresh and it's nice and tender, which is exactly what you want in octopus. You do not want that rubberiness. I'm gonna try it with the patatas bravas. Now that comes with its own sauce. This is a roasted pepper sauce. It's a little bit sweeter. Not as spicy as the chipotle sauce, obviously. Let's try this one. This is the gambas with um, wrapped in platanos, so shrimp and plantains for those that don't speak Spanish. It smells really nice. I bet it's gonna be savory and sweet, that's my guess. This one comes with a mango sauce. That's a huge bite. I'm gonna regret doing this all at once. <laughs> you have the savory element of the shrimp with the, the sweetness of the platano and that mango cream sauce doesn't overpower the dish, which is really nice, because you may think, well, the platano is already sweet, wouldn't the, the sweet sauce kind of make this too sweet of a dish? But it doesn't, it actually works really nicely together. These are two great tapas options. They have a ton of other stuff at Beso, which by the way means kiss. Enjoy it, it's a great spot. Thanks for 
watching. If you like this video, make sure you check out my Staten Island Guide Part 1, my guides to Queens, Brooklyn, and the Bronx. I'll see you next time. Bye.